Hi my angels and welcome back to a brand new series that I'm starting on my channel which is called Beauty and Positivity. I don't know about you guys but over the last few years I am just sick and tired of spilling the tea, tea on this, tea on that. It's just not what our minds, our bodies, our souls need. We need to be consuming things that are uplifting, that is going to be something that is going to help you in some way or another, that's not going to make you feel like I want to be watching things that are making me feel empowered, that are making me feel good, that are making positive conversations happening. So I thought what better way to do this than to sit down and do some chatty videos with you guys where we talk about different topics in every single video. So let's sip some positive tea and just sit down, do our makeup and just have a chat. This first episode is going to be about the 10 things that I learnt in 2020. There's a whole mix of stuff and I'm going to be painting my face at the same time. So if you want to grab a tea or coffee with me and have a good little chat that's going to make you feel good at the end of it, then please keep watching. So I'm not going to mention any of the products that I'm using, but they will all be listed in the description box below. Um, but I want this to be a space where we can just talk about all things that are positive, talk about things that maybe we're all going through. You guys can send me suggestions of new kind of topics that you want me to talk about in the forthcoming episodes. But for now, I'm going to basically list out all the things that I learnt in 2020. Oh my god, it was such an interesting, an interesting, difficult, loving in a weird way, healing year for so many of us. And I'm not going to lie, it was a hard year. Um, one of the biggest things that I learned last year was connection and how important connection is. I feel like I've always been such a, like, family person. I like love being around family. I love being around friends. I generally love being with them physically. So last year was really, really hard for me. And I kind of realized how important it is to keep that connection going. I cannot tell you the amount of Zoom calls, FaceTime calls, Zoom parties that we had. My husband celebrated his birthday last year um, in a very, very unique way, which I'm sure a lot of us did um, with a Zoom party that I organized. So yeah, it was a very, very different year, but connection was so important during last year. And I feel like that is something that I'm gonna take into this year as well. And by that, I mean that I'm going to make sure that I'm actively keeping in touch with my family. Because I feel like a lot of the times we can forget because we've got so much stuff going on in our lives. It really kind of brought that back to me that, you know, I love my family so much. I love my friends so much. And to really make that time for them, regardless of how busy I am, I want to make sure that I spend whether that's just like 20 minutes on my phone every day, making sure I've got back to all my messages. Sometimes that is really hard for me to do because sometimes my WhatsApp has like 70 messages and I'm like, oh my God. So yeah, that is one thing that I really learned and was really important to me. I'm really kind of pulled up my heartstrings because I found it very, very hard personally not to be able to see my family so often. And even now I, I can count on one hand the amount of times I saw my family last year which is really sad but hopefully we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and things will change for the better this year. There's one thing I feel like a lot of us learned last year especially me um, was to be much more kinder to those we come across on the internet. I feel like last year we all kind of came together as humanity which I love but I personally genuinely feel that we made the internet space um, a much kinder place to be in. I know I have my boundaries and I know I have certain things that I just won't allow in to my space online because I want it to be a very kind and loving and a nourishing environment for all of my followers and just everyone that follows me I just want it to be a really positive space but kindness is definitely something that I feel like really got instilled in me and I've been on my own like healing journey over the last definitely the last year and I was putting it off for so long um but kindness was one thing that I feel like if you haven't really like dipped your feet into that and really really thought about it from kind of like an external point of view like almost kind of seeing yourself come out of your body 
and seeing how you are or the small actions that you might be taking towards others might not be as kind as you think. I highly recommend to do that this year. Connection and kindness were two things that I feel like were at the top of my list. By no means are all of these things that I'm talking about in like order of importance, it's just things that I have made a list of. <laughs> One thing I actively worked on last year and that I really like felt the importance of is having a routine. Over the last, oh, say like four or five years, with my life kind of changing and my job changing, I felt like I didn't really have a routine. I would wake up at random times every single day, go to sleep at random times every single day and just do my own thing and try to tick off things on my to-do list and I'm gonna be honest with you, it really took a toll on me. I kind of felt very lost. I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. I found that it was affecting my mental health because I didn't have a routine. And I found I was really losing myself. And last year was the year that I built a routine, a routine that I stuck to, I wanna say like a, 85% of the time because we all have our moments we all have our days where we're not feeling like great um, and I mean 2020 was a year of that as well and yeah so last year I really 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 stuck to a routine and my god it was so transformational and it was so healing and I felt so great especially the days that I stuck to my routine and I also learned last year that if my routine does get thrown out of whack, then it's okay. Um, I feel like I have this very weird need to like control all aspects of my life. And this is again a part of my healing journey where it's something that I'm learning and working on, learning more about myself. I mean, I've shared a bit of my morning routine on my Instagram, which I'll leave a link to in the down bar but routine played such an important part in my year last year and it seems so weird to think now that for so many years I genuinely had no routine whatsoever um, but I'm so 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 grateful and thankful that I have a routine that really works for me for like a day-to-day -day basis. I want to know whether you guys have a routine. If you do have a daily routine, please, please, please leave them in the comments below because I feel like we can definitely be a community that can share and just be a bit more open with each other because I'm sure you've probably read a message or read a comment or read something online that's completely changed your perspective in your day or in your life. So I really hope that we can come together and help everyone out. So I will be keeping an eye out on your guys' routines. I will also post a little bit of my routine maybe as well. Um, I know I'm gonna link it below as well, but yeah, it would be amazing if we can all help each other out. So another thing that I really focused on last year was that which is gratitude. And I feel like gratitude and so many words are just thrown about on the internet and they kind of lose their meaning. And I suppose that gratitude for me was a way that I would kind of have a conversation with myself every night and list in my head at least three things that I was grateful for that day. Now, I mean, I was stuck in the house like 99% of the time, um, as I'm sure a lot of you guys were as well. And it was literally picking out the tiny little things that you necessarily wouldn't really notice. Something as simple as having fresh air to breathe. The ability for me to be able to go outside, clear my mind and go on a walk. Like so grateful for those small, small, small things. And by me having that moment of gratitude to myself, with myself, I felt so much at ease and I was almost able to kind of like pack all of my feelings up that I had that day, think about them, be with them for a moment and kind of, you know, file them away. They don't need to be, especially if I've had a moment where it's not been such a great day for me mentally or physically, I was able to just be with my thoughts, process them at the end of the day and kind of be like, yep, that is done and tomorrow will be a new day. And it's taken me a while to get to this place. I'm not gonna say that, you know, I just did this one day and was changed overnight. I feel like your journey into living a more conscious well-being, more positive, more uplifting, more um, fulfilling life is something that happens gradually. It's not gonna happen overnight. And I'm sure that's not 
something that you want to hear but i genuinely genuinely believe that making small changes every single day makes a massive difference at the end of it so having gratitude for those small things in life was so 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 grounding for me and so important for me to carry on and it's something that i do even today I don't know whether you guys follow me on Instagram, but I posted on there that I have started a five year diary and it's my little way of journaling and putting my thoughts down on paper and it's so healing. It is something that I recommend every single one of you to do. Um, you don't have to buy a journal for it. You can literally just have a notepad and put a date down and start writing your thoughts down and leaving enough space for like the next five years that you can add a few, um, sentences into it i will leave a link to the one that i bought um, and some other options in the down bar it has honestly been it's been amazing that's 2021 but let's go back to 2020 i suppose this kind of leads me on to the next thing that i learned last year and that was to slow down we had i feel like the whole world had no choice but to slow down and that did such good to the way that i was feeling. I was able to really sit with my thoughts and sit with how I'm feeling that day and really slow down and kind of spend time with myself and nurture myself. And I know that sounds really bizarre, but it was such a good time to do that because I mean, let's face it, we were all stuck at home and we had nothing really to do like I mean I did jigsaw puzzles I did loads of other activities and arts and craft and cleaning and I did so much stuff but the actual act the physical act of slowing down slowing my mind slowing my body down slowing my thoughts down it really really helped and it's definitely again something that I'm going to be taking in to the new year it's something that I've learnt slowly to do because I find that a lot of the times my mind can just be racing 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 and I have to pull myself back and be like whoa 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 your mind doesn't need to be racing you can chill you can relax maybe I can do a separate video on this about um like my toolbox that I use to help me ground myself um because I feel like that's just another video in itself but yeah really 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 loved slowing down so many people that I've spoken to in this past like year or so everyone's been feeling very very similar in terms of slowing down gratitude and it's really nice knowing that a lot of the people that I've spoken to have also felt like similar emotions and similar ways about things and it's just again to show like that connection like we're not alone we're all in this together and we can do this I think last year was another year of you know like we can get through this if we are all there with each other, if we have a little bit more compassion, if we have a little bit more love, kindness towards each other, we can all get through it together. So let's talk about self-care. I feel like we always say to ourselves, you know, self-care is about like putting a mask on and like having some me time. But I feel like it's so much deeper than that. I was able to care for myself in ways that I never thought that would be possible for me in the sense that it wouldn't bring like a real major shift in my life, but doing those little things, whether that was actually like just making a new dish, um, cause I find cooking really therapeutic, making that new dish or reading that book or really kind of honing in and having a bit more structure in my meditation routine or having that one hour in the morning to myself for me doing things that I want to do without having to think about anything else that form of self-care is so transformational and i highly recommend you guys to do it and i'm not saying that you need to take out like an hour in your day if you don't have an hour to spare you can totally totally just have 10 15 minutes to yourself whether that's you're putting something off for ages like you want to finish reading that book or you want to watch that documentary honestly just take that time aside to do that for yourself it's almost like giving yourself a hug in a sense because you're doing something for you you're not doing it for anyone else feedback's getting cuddled without me over there yeah it's almost like giving yourself a hug and doing something for yourself i mean i do it i always put things aside i'm like oh i'll do that later i'll do that i've got this i've this got this going on i've got that going on um there's so much stuff that i need to do i can't do this right now but actually setting a little bit of time whether it's the same time every single day that you can do for example let's say 8 p.m is your time to do something that you want to do for yourself whatever it is whatever works for you 
I would highly recommend to give it a go because it was so good for me last year just doing that one little thing that I wanted to do that year for me. Sometimes it was just having like a really nice hot drink that I made from scratch um, and that just made me feel so good no matter what kind of day I was having, no matter how, how many ups and downs I was going through, um, I felt like that really helped me stay zen. <laughs> so speaking of doing things for me and doing things that made me feel good and having that kind of self-care moment, one thing that I did without fail was to go out into nature and go and have some walks. Now, Tupac definitely helped with this. And for those of you who have no idea who Tupac is, Tupac is my little puppy. <laughs> He's my little dog son. So Tupac actually helped me so much last year. We got him at the end of 2019. He was my 30th birthday present. He is honestly the best little thing that's come into our lives. Not only my life, my husband's life as well. He teaches you this kind of unconditional love which is like no other. Um, but yeah, he has honestly been so amazing. And because of him, I've obviously been going out for walks and being out in nature. Now, I never knew how healing nature could be until a couple of years ago. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that I've been going on walks for years because it really was 2020 that I started becoming so like fond of nature and being in nature and realizing the healing qualities that nature has. So whenever I go on any of my daily walks, one thing that I will do is I will have my meditation playlist playing in my headphones. So I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description box. It's on Spotify and it is my like mantra, bhajan, meditation music that I listen to on my walks. And that in itself, being outdoors and listening to music that is so uplifting, that is so grounding and so healing at the same time, it's it really transformed my mornings and it would really set the tone for the rest of my day. And I don't think that I could ever start my days anymore without listening to that music and or going for a walk. Obviously, if it's like chucking it down with rain, I can't really go for my morning walks, but it has been something that has healed me in such a natural way just being in nature and a lot of the times i will be on a walk and i will see other people out there and everyone is just so happy when they're outside and in the fresh air and in nature now one of the things that i love doing when i go on a walk is not only just being in nature but being in nature mindfully so i will use all of my five senses and be really conscious and aware of everything that's going around me. So the days where I want to really focus on my mindful walking, I will make sure that I have either my like headphones off for a bit, and I will basically use all of my five senses to be really aware of everything that's going on around me. So I will be looking at things that I can see with my sight, I will be hearing out for things that I can hear, whether that's cars, whether that's birds chirping, whether that's crunching of the leaves. I'll be really, really, really mindful of that. Feeling, what can I touch? Am I holding on to Tupac's lead? Is my hand in my pocket? What have I got in my pocket? Little, tiny little things like that really helps ground me and it really helps me feel so, like, at one with the world in a weird way. And it's such a beautiful feeling when you actually go on a mindful walk out in nature. And if you've not done it, honestly give it a go because you will feel so good by the time you get back home. And then obviously there's smells. Is there anything that I can, I can smell? Was it raining earlier and can I smell like the rain? Is there a perfume that I've got on that I can smell? Is there some beautiful smells of like flowers that I've walked past? Anything but being just really mindful about it and taste. Is there anything that I can taste in the air? Is there anything that I can taste in my mouth? Like, there are so many little things going on that I feel like when you're really mindful about everything around you, when you take all of your five senses into, um, into account, it really grounds you and it gets you into the present moment. We all began to live in the present rather than thinking too much about the future and the past. Um, definitely for me, of course there were days where I struggled with it and I would think about, oh my God, what am I, what am I gonna do? Like, what's gonna happen? Um, 
it, it was quite a scary year, but I felt like doing these things really helped me stay in the present. It really helped me stay mindful. It really helped me kind of transform my life in such like a healing way. Not just walks, just being in nature in general. And yeah, if you've not tried listening to a podcast or music, something uplifting, something that's gonna benefit you in your day, something that you could be learning about. So one thing I want to also touch up on was 2020 was a very, very intense year for so many of us. So I'm not, I'm probably gonna say the wrong exact word, so please forgive me if I say the wrong thing, but there were so many human rights issues that were brought to front from the largest protests in the world, from the Indian farmers um, to the BLM protests to so, so many things that happened. And that was a real moment for me to not just talk about it online, but to actually educate myself with what's been going on in the world, whether that was in the past um, at, or in the present. And it's something that I still try and do quite often. Although I'm not an activist, although it's not something that I can um, kind of give my undivided attention to because there are so many other things that I'm sure you and I we all have so many other things going on in our lives but actually actively making those changes and educating ourselves on what's going on and the ways that we can help so I try to keep my platforms as positive as possible um it is very hard to talk about everything and educate myself on everything on top of everything else that I'm doing uh, but it's just allowing everyone to have that time to grow as a person to educate themselves as a person and passing that education on to your family and friends i always feel like whenever anything big happens always have those conversations at home before you start talking about it to everyone and everywhere because you want to make sure that you're you're you know the right things that you're educated uh, and if you're not educated then just be a bit open and just be a bit vulnerable in the sense that it's not my strength um if anyone can send me any help or if you can point me in the right direction um people are always out there to help um and if they're not then be more helpful that's another thing you can do this year <laughs> um so yeah my point was was that last year was the year that i realized that just because I'm no longer like at uni or at school, that it doesn't mean that I stop learning. If anything, I've got this like want to like learn more about things. Um, um, and again, one of the things that obviously I learned last year was to be more kind. Um, so if there is something that I'm not doing or someone else is not doing, not to bash them, not to, not that I've done that before or not that I do that, but like, yeah, just giving people time to do what they need to do um, and not forcing people to do things, um, which was, again, something very, very revealing to me last year. And now I am going on to my final, final point and thing that I learnt last year. And it's a bit of a interesting one for me because it's nothing that I really used to look at a few years ago, um, but over the last couple of years, I have really, really, really tried my best to mindfully do this. And that is to support local businesses and or small businesses. So one of the ways that I find the easiest, easiest to support local is if you are fancying a takeaway, don't go to your chain restaurants to get a takeaway, go to one of the small family run takeaway businesses in your town or your city. That honestly means the world to the people who work so hard to give you yummy takeaway food. So that's one thing that my husband and I are actively do, and we have done so for quite a few years now. I've never really spoken about it online, and I feel like this is such a nice way for me to be able to talk about different topics and talk about different things that can all help us together as a family. Another way that I have started to support local it's like at our fingertips and we sometimes don't think about it. So like when it comes to buying anything that we've needed for the house or even like ingredients to make my like herbal teas and things, I go to Etsy first. Etsy is probably one of the easiest ways that you can help out a small business. There are so many amazing creatives on there who either make things or source things and it's such a lovely way to support someone who is working at their dreams to do something that they love 
and if I can be that one little order to help someone with their dreams, like that makes me so, so, so happy. So if you find it hard to find local or small businesses, you can either start off at Etsy. I have honestly found so many amazing things on there. I wouldn't even be able to tell you um, the amazingness that I've got from there. Um, from like furniture pieces down to like little things like handmade incense sticks. There's just so much. But last year, obviously with everything going on in the world, it was even more important, I felt for me personally, to support more small businesses, whether that's local or not, but small businesses. You know, it, it was the year that really, really opened my eyes into the fact that my little order can make a massive, massive, massive difference to um, people out there who are, you know, who are just doing their thing to make their dreams into their passion. For people who are um, wanting to make their passion into their paycheck, if I can be that little help, honestly, it makes me so happy. And I feel like those are all the 10 things that I learned. And I actually still have my lipstick and lashes left to do. So I feel like I'm just gonna sit here and chat to you guys. Maybe um, how my relationship has changed with makeup and beauty over the last, um, last year in 2020. So I can probably tell you the amount of times that I painted my face last year. And it was not that many. So 2020 was definitely the year that I realized I love makeup, but I love it for special occasions. I don't need to wear makeup every single day. And I have definitely carried that on to this year. Obviously I'm sitting here painting my face, but it's a bit of like a therapy session for me. I love, love, love um, just painting my face. It makes, makes me feel really like zen and grounded. It's almost like a therapeutic thing whenever I paint my face. So um, yeah, it was a very interesting year where I realized I, don't actually need to wear a lot of makeup and my relationship with makeup has definitely changed to the point where on a day-to-day -day, I'd probably just do my skincare I wouldn't even bother about you know doing like a full face of makeup I really enjoyed learning more about myself and learning that it's okay to grow it's okay to change the older you get it's okay for your thoughts and your beliefs to become stronger um, or to maneuver and, and, and move into a way that suits your sense of self at that current moment in time. Um, and my relationship with makeup was definitely something that changed throughout last year. So this is the end of my first episode of Beauty and Positivity. And I really genuinely hope you guys enjoyed it for me to just sit down and chat to you guys about all the things that I learned in 2020. These are literally just the things off of the top of my head. I made like a little note of them and I didn't want it to be more than 10, but Honestly, it's just been so nice to sit here and chat to you guys about things that matter so much to me in my life and be able to share that with you. And if this can inspire you to make small changes in your life, honestly, it is so transformative and it is so fulfilling in a way that you'll notice it months down the line that actually making those little changes have made me feel like such a better person. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. Please leave me suggestions of what other topics you'd like me to cover in the next episodes in the comments below. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all of your love and support. It doesn't go unnoticed. And yeah, that's everything for me for now. And hopefully I will see you guys all in my next video. I'm sending you all the love and light in my heart to yours. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.